Okay, uh, today we are looking at composite functions. Uh, the nice thing about composite functions is you already know how to work with them. Um, recall. Um, the only thing that we need to focus on right here is actually the notation. But let's first focus on the basics. Um, recall, let's say I have a function f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 right here. And I want to evaluate that function at negative 1. I simply say f of negative 1. And that means I will replace every x that I see with a negative 1. So I am plugging in negative 1, and so that's 3 times 1, um, minus 2 plus 1, that's 3 minus 2 plus 1, and so that's equals to 2. And so we say f of negative 1 is equals to 2. Well, the thing about a function is that with a function, I can plug anything into that function. I could have done, instead of f of negative 1, I could found f of m. And what that would mean is, I will be plugging in m everywhere I see x. Like so. And then I would simply need to evaluate this thing right here. And so this is going to be equal to 3m squared plus 2m plus 1. Well, what else can I plug into this function? Well, into this function right here, I can actually plug in um, x plus 2, a binomial or a more complex um, term. But this will mean the same thing. Everywhere I saw an x, I will now have an x plus 2. Compare this line right here with this line right here. They're exactly the same. In this one right here, x equals negative 1. In this line down here, x equals x plus 2. But other than that, I just got to work this problem out. And I have to be careful, of course. But this will take us to our answer. So right here, first things first, I have to take care of the x plus 2 squared. And so we'll work that out by itself. And then come back to the rest of the problem. x plus 2 squared is equals to x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 2. I FOIL this thing out, or I just do mul distribution twice, and that will give me x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4, which gives me x squared plus 4x plus 4. So now I've figured out what this is equals to, I can rewrite the problem. So f of x plus 2 is equals to 3 times x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus, oh, I didn't put my 2 there, 2 times x plus 2 plus 1, and then I simply distribute and group like terms. And so this is going to be 3x squared plus 12x plus 12 plus 2x plus 4 plus 1, and so that's going to be equal to 3x squared. I have a 12x and 2x, so that's plus 14x. I have a 12, a 4, and a 1. 12 plus 4 is 16, plus 17. So f of x plus 2 is simply 3x squared plus 14x plus 7. Well, This is actually all you need to know for this section. There are some tiny points that we need to note. But this is actually the main gist of this section. But anyway, so let's take a step back to compose two functions. Means to plug one function into the other. And so therefore, by definition, 
I need to have at least two functions, one function into another, into the other. So by definition, I need at least two functions. So consider if I have a function f of x, which is equals to 3x squared um, plus 2x plus 1. Hmm. Where have I seen this function before? Of course. And like I said, you need two functions. And so my second function right here, the g of x, is going to be, um, let's go with x plus 2. Hmm. I wonder where I got these two functions from. Kind of. To compose two functions means to plug one function into another. And so what it will mean is I have f of x. And I'm going to plug g of x into that function. The uh, g of x is functioning like that negative 1 that we had higher up. But instead of having negative 1, we're just plugging in something that's more complicated. Now, the nice thing about function composition right here is that because I know I'm plugging in g of x, I know this is true. This is equals to 2 times g of x squared plus 3 times the g of x minus or plus 1. Did I get that sign right? All right, uh, um, 2 times g of x squared plus 3x times 3 times g of x plus 1. This step, um, however, is normally um, suppressed when most people are learning um, about composite functions. Okay. This step right here will help prevent you from making errors and help clarify what you're trying to get to. Um, but technically, it's not necessary. Um, but all I'm saying right here is I'm taking g and plugging it into f of x. This is said to be g of f of x. Now, this can be written as f of x plus 2. Uh -oh. Is equals to 2 times x plus 2 squared plus 3 times x plus 2 plus 1. Notice that the x plus 2 is simply taking the space of the g of x, f of x plus 2, and this is exactly the same problem that we did before. And so the composite function right here simply is using the function names to express something that we have already done before and something that we know well. Alright, so the last thing that I need to note or, or to point out right here is the notation. We generally don't write it as f of g of x. Instead, we write it, so we generally don't write it this way. Although this is correct notation, we write it this way right here. We write it as f open circle g, parentheses around them, and then we have an x. This does not mean f o g times x. This means this right here plug g, take the g function, and plug it into the f function. Um, this notation right here um, arises when you have a more complicated um, uh, um, composition. Let's say I had, say, three or four functions, and I wanted to compose them together. This not, not, no, notation becomes a lot simpler. So let's say I had f of g of h of k of x. Right, this right here is kind of hard to read, right? But with the open circle um, notation, this will simply be written as f of g of h of k of x. And so what this would mean was, would be to take k, plug it into h. Then that answer, take that answer and plug it into g, and then take that answer and plug it into f. Again, just like right here, plug G into F. Uh -huh. And so you have to plug in over and over and over again and therefore compose one function with the other over and over again. I like to call this the little hopscotch. You hop backwards to get yourself to your answer. This function right here, G, is called the inside function. This function f right here is called the outside function. 
We're plugging the inside function into the outside function. Hence the name inside function. Okay, it's going into the function. All right. Um, let's take a look at um, two more examples. Oh, two more examples. So let's say I have f of x is equal to x divided by x um, squared plus 3. And then I have my g of x, which is equal to 2x minus 1. And I want to compose f of g of x. And so f open circle g of x. When starting out, it is often helpful to write it as inside and outside functions explicitly. g is the inside function, and so it will mean f of g of x. Notice I'm using the word of. The open circle right here is, is, is pronounced of. So that's f of g of x. And so what this means again is that g is what I'm plugging in. And so this means everywhere I see an x, I will write g of x. One of the things I like to do is count how many x's do you see? In the original problem, I see one, two x's. And so that means I will have one, two g's into my function. Now that I have that right here, I know that g of x is equal to this right here. And so this right here is simply 2x minus 1 divided by 2x minus 1 squared plus 3. I go off to the side to figure out what 2x minus 1 squared is. That's 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1. And so that is oof, 4x squared oof, minus 2x minus 2x plus 1. And so that's equal to 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. And so this problem, the numerator does not change. The denominator becomes more complicated. But I only have the those together, and that will take me home. And so therefore, this right here is 2x minus 1 divided by 4x squared minus 4x plus 4. All right. The last thing we're going to consider right here is how to find the domain of a composite function. Well, to find the domain of the composite function, you have to find two domains. You have to find the domain of the inside function and then you have to find the domain of the final composite function, and then you have to intersect those two. So you want to, so finding the domain. So let's say I have um, f of x is equal to 3x plus 4. And I have g of x is equal to 2 divided by x plus 3 right here. And I want to find the domain of f of g of x. First thing we're going to do is we're going to find f of g of x. Again, since we're just starting out here, we will define explicitly the outside and the inside functions. g is the inside function. g is what we're plugging into f. And so this will mean 3 times g of x plus 4. And so that's going to be 3 times g of x is this right here. 2 over x plus 3 plus 4. And then I multiply. And so that's going to give me, think of this as 3 over 1. That's going to be 6 over x plus 3 plus Now right here, I am trying to find the domain. I have to find two domains. I have to find the domain of the inside function. Um, which is set the denominator not equal to zero. So x cannot be um, negative three. Then I have to find the domain of the result, the composite function.
and that will be the domain of 6 over x plus 3 um, plus 4, which is again set the denominator not equal to 0. And then you combine the two domains together. x cannot be negative 3 and x cannot be negative 3. And so that leaves me with um, a domain of x cannot be negative 3. Ah, when you find what the two have in common. So the overall domain is going to be x such that x cannot be negative 3. Okay, you have to combine the two domains Alright, next we move on to function evaluation. Evaluation of composite functions.